And it is my task to, let's say, <clears throat> do the introducing words now. Uh, but the picture what you see over here, and this is our home. This is what a lot of us are taking care of. For sure, Europark Federation with all his members, we try to safeguard wildlife protected areas with in protected areas for the future. So we have to take care of our planet, not for ourselves, but also for the future generations and all, let's say, creatures that live on it. But as you might know, our planet is under pressure. One million species are at the brink of extinction. That was recently uh, announced by the IP Best, the Intergovernmental Panel on Biodiversity and Ecosystem Services. So we have a problem over there. And not only in biodiversity, also climate change is a big issue. And as you know, today in Madrid, the COP25 COP uh, on climate change has started and will be I think the central issue in the press in the next coming two weeks because we are not fulfilling our duties to stay well below the two degrees as we uh, agreed on in, 19, uh, in 2015 in the Paris Agreement. Uh, so we have a big task to go for and Europark can play a huge role in that and maybe you can, I will tell you a little bit uh, on this later. And that's why I think we are very pleased with the the resolution that was voted uh, with a uh, great majority uh, two, uh, two days ago or three days ago on uh, the climate uh, emergency at the European Parliament to give a signal to Madrid, to all the world leaders and all the, com the parties uh, uh, in the world, that there is something really going on. Climate change is existential, ladies and gentlemen, so we need to address that. Um, and this uh, good news, uh, this bad news can also be addressed, of course, with some policy uh, objectives that was now, uh, it, what is now the big Green Deal that was proposed by uh, Ursula von der Leyen uh, with Franz Timmermans as an important, let's say, liaison to, to the world, um, where Europe wants to lead on sustainability and circular economy uh, at the global level as well and trying to achieve that at the European level with the proposal of 55% less carbon dioxide in, in 2030 where they will try to have a climate law, European climate law in the next let's say five to six years and to have a financial climate bazooka where the European Investment Bank is planning to invest 100 billion euros a year on climate-friendly uh, projects on the Okay, so that's why, of course, uh, the conference is that much important, and that's also why I will leave in an hour, uh, approximately, because... Uh, Oh, something changed. Yeah, they don't want me to speak. You know? yeah. So that's why, of course, I have to go because there are lots of, uh, uh, let's say, organizations that are uh, coming together here in Brussels today on climate litigation as a message to uh, Madrid next week. And of course, there's another important, I think, meeting coming up next year in Kunming in China, where the conference of parties uh, will be held uh, on the, the Convention on Biological Diversity of the United Nations, where a new policy plan for the next uh, t uh, 10 years, next decade, will be uh, de uh, developed uh, for biodiversity. What about tourism then, of course, you would say, because it's all about tourism and the impact of tour tourism on the globe is enormous. It is, uh, like also uh, Robbie Beaver said, that it is very, it's very important as a sector, the, the tourism sector. So 10% of the global GDP is based uh, on the tourism, uh, let's say, sector. 235 million jobs. It's the main income of low-income countries and 1.8 billion tourists is uh, expected uh, in 2030. But on the other hand, of course, the impact of tourism is huge as well. So the loss of biodiversity, the climate impact, uh, only 10% of all, let's say, the income stay local, severe eco ecological footprint, and it's the first source of pollution. So the question is how to deal with that. And uh, the other thing is, of course, a new thing that we see the last decade is uh, the problem of over-tourism. Huh? 
uh, Venice was very much in the news in Italy, but you have also, wherever country you go, you have big problems with, with uh, too much tourists everywhere. So the question is, can we give an answer to one, at the one hand side, the opportunity, and on the other, on the other hand, taking care of the carrying capacity of protected areas. Uh, I think that would be a beautiful solution if we could provide that. And then we see that uh, from uh, the, the OECD that there, is, there are some mega trends on tourism uh, on the brink, not, not on, 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 the, on, the, on the horizon now, where sustainable tourism comes in as a very important, let's say, issue for the upcoming uh, uh, years. So I think where, uh, where Europark Federation is really uh, trying to develop sustainable tourism as a mechanism for also social economic impact. I think also from the mega trends from OECD, there is a kind of good uh, direction going on. <clears throat> so that's why sustainable tourism is a tool for development overall, and sustainable tourism can also bring a lot of added value, not only for the protected area and on the carrying capacity, for instance, but for a local community. And that's, I think, the most important message that it is an holistic story where we bring together all the partners related to that protected area and make a kind of plan to make it sustainable on the other, on one hand, but also to invite people to have an excitement in the, these beautiful areas. So that's why Europark, the charter, uh, are good, uh, good for parks, is good for people. Uh, so that's our message here. And I think that you uh, today who are here and will receive the awards, you're working towards this. And I think we can group this and make this so powerful that we can be heard at the European level and even at the global level that the impact we have is less than, let's say, the classical tourism uh, overall. The good thing here, and I'm nearly at the end, is that when you look at the sustainable development goals, and this I, I think is the only uh, presentation of the sustainable goals that is really, uh, let's say, making sense, where the biosphere is the basis of everything we do, society and economy are built on the biosphere, but on goal 17, partnerships, uh, that's where we come in as well. Huh? So partnerships is working together from every, let's say, uh, part of our society you, you come from, is trying to make a partnership that at the end of the day is also good for the biosphere. And that's where Europark Federation, I think, also plays a vital and a major role for the future. So my last uh, slide is here that if we are smart, and if you are smart, and if we work together, we have golden eggs on the condition if we can safeguard the chicken, and the chicken is protected areas. So if we try to succeed in having a beautiful, uh, let's say, her beautiful natural heritage also for the future, we will also can have these golden eggs, which are social economic benefits as well for those partners and people who are living in these beautiful regions. So I must say welcome again to everyone and congratulations on beforehand already. Um, and uh, I give now the floor to Carol Ritchie, the director of Europark Federation. Thank you so much. Hi, thank you, Robbie, and thank you, Ignace. So we're, we're going to start with our awards this afternoon. And I'm absolutely delighted to see the, a packed room uh, coming from all parts of Europe. Um, unfortunately, although the title says uh, here that uh, Patricia Rossi uh, would be amongst us, uh, unfortunately, she was victim to the, uh, the uh, cancellation of flights uh, from by Alitalia, so I'm glad the rest of our Italian colleagues managed to get here okay. Uh, she may just make it before the end of the ceremony, so I, ho I hope she is able to do that. Because I know that many of you have taken uh, quite adventurous uh, journeys uh, to get here, from the very far north in Lapland, Palace Ilas Tunturi, thank you for coming, way down to the south, I'm not quite sure which of the Italian parts is the most southern, but... Uh, Alta Murcia, I think you must be one of the Murcia. You must be one of the uh, closest, uh, uh, the most southern. So again, thank you very much for coming to hear to the heart 
of our European values, of our European purpose, and hopefully, as Igneous and Robbie both mentioned, to a new European vision. But I know more importantly, you've all taken a sustainable journey, hopefully not just in real time, but certainly back in your own areas, where that journey to uh, take a lighter care of your territories, of your regions and of your parks, working with all the local stakeholders in your region together to um, see benefits for your economy, for your social networks and, of course, for our environment. That's the journey that you've all been on. So at the beginning of our ceremony, we particularly want to celebrate those who have at the beginning of that journey, well, really, they're actually a little bit on from that journey, but those parks who are celebrating their award for the Charter for Sustainable Tourism in protected areas for the first time. And I know that those of you who are here are representing a huge body of work behind you and a huge amount of colleagues and stakeholders and politicians and everyone who has been behind you on that journey. So I, I, we know that when you come here, with the, you know, there's a huge uh, volume of people that I'm sure uh, have helped you uh, get here. So the first of our four parks that we'd like to celebrate uh, achieving the award for sustainable tourism in protected areas are, first is from Italy. Now, again, I say this every year and I'm going to say it again. I'm going to apologise in advance to all of you for my mispronunciations of your places. Please forgive me. Um, <laughs> I, I will do my best, uh, but you can certainly tease me about it later uh, when, when we have a celebration drink. I will, I will soon present to you lots of Scottish names and I challenge you uh, to do the same as I have to do with the names of your parts, but I, I will do my best. So. The first of our parks that we'd really like to celebrate to award the Charter for Sustainable Tourism in protected areas is the Marema. Marema? Marema. I work with all these Italians. I think I'd be able to get that. Marema. A regional park from Italy. If you'd like to come forward to receive your certificate. There's going to be a little bit of stage management here. We need you when you come to receive your certificates to come to where Stefania is standing would like you to have your photograph taken there. Then if you want to say a few words of thank you, you then need to come around to where I am here because this is the working mic. You'll see on your screens as each park comes forward, some of the words from the verifiers, our independent verifiers who go to um, make the assessment of the sustainable tourism in the, in the parks and in the regions. And you'll also see some pictures of the area. So please enjoy that as our parks are receiving their certificates. But as I say, if you do want to say a few words of thanks, you're very welcome to come to the lectern here. Our second park, who've made that journey to receive their award, has come all the way from Estonia, and that is the Lachema National Park from Estonia.
ladies and gentlemen, uh, hello everybody. It's a great day for us Estonians from Lahema National Park. Lahema means land near of sea. It's a land near of base. And um, our national park was established 50 years ago. So we have experience to protect nature and cultural heritage during quite a lot of years. Now we have strategy of sustainable development and it's a great thing for us. What's important, there are a lot of people who was involved, who were involved in the process of making this strategy. There are more than 100 stakeholders, local peoples who are living in the territory of National Park, uh, NGOs and um, business companies too. Uh, the financing of this uh, making, this strategy, this was uh, financed by Leader Activity, activity Group. And um, it's, it, uh, it's, uh, yeah, it's, a, it's a great thing to uh, do. So we have now a strategy and we are ready to implement in. Thank you. And that is a great thing about the Charter, because it's not just a document, it's not just a strategy, it's a choice, and a choice to make a different way of tourism in your area. So the action plan is the living part of the Charter. So uh, again, thank you for paying tribute to all of those who contribute to delivering um, the sustainable tourism, sustainable development indeed in, in your areas. Our next park, and Spain, you do this to me every year. I'm going to do my best, but here we go. <laughs> Cap Caleris del Terre y del Fresor Nature Park. Was I anywhere close? Thank you. <laughs> you can come and pronounce it better yourselves. Please, you must come and let people hear what the real name of the park is. Good afternoon. Uh, our park, the name of our park is in Catalan, in Catalonia. It's Parc Natural de les Capsaleres del Ter i del Fraser. Okay. It's very complicated. It's the same. We are very pleased to receive this award. Our natural park was created in uh, 2015. And now, four years later, we have achieved the European Charter for Sustainable Tourism in protected areas. Thank you very much. Thank you for that beautiful pronunciation. Okay. Italy, you're next. I'm going to try this with full gusto and confidence. We were always taught at school, as long as you say it confidently, yeah, yeah, it sounds good. Stelvio, <laughs> National Park from Italy. Please come and accept your award.
So I want to thank you for the charter. We are um, bright new in, uh, in working with, uh, with the European Charter. And um, it's, it was a very, it is, it, it, not it wasn't, but already beginning, it was a, a good experience to work together as uh, we are a little bit special uh, in the Stelvio National Park because we have three regions and uh, now we are doing even actions together. Thank you. So I'd like you to, um, yeah, if you wouldn't mind hanging around for uh, just a few minutes. Um, my colleague uh, Stefania would like to just, uh, you know, maybe ask you a few questions about, uh, about your work. Yes, indeed, I would like to profit of this opportunity to let you know a little bit more about Stelvio National Park because it's a very interesting experience. So I would like to ask uh, some of you that is ready to answer to my questions. Uh, okay, my questions are the following. Uh, just uh, tell us a few words about your uh, special uh, park because, uh, as they said, there are three regions, very, uh, one region, two provinces, very important uh, in the management of the national park. And they have also two languages, uh, Italian and uh, German. So I would like, we would like to know something more. And also, I made always uh, already the second question, how the charter help, helps uh, in your management uh, with all these uh, different actors? Thank you. First of all, I, I try to speak English because mm, I'm, <laughs> I'm very poor in it. But uh, first of all, we have to say that uh, Stelvio National Park is one of the oldest uh, in Italy. It's more than 80 years old. And uh, it has a story of difficulties with uh, the local communities. It was imposed by the fascism during uh, uh, that period before the Second World War. And, uh, and in all the three sides of the parts of the, of the park, there was uh, uh, everyday problems from for the local communities uh, with this uh, governance of the park. Uh, so, in the uh, 2011, first uh, there was a, the first attempt to, to change uh, this governance, uh, and then it came uh, uh, to life in. Uh, uh, 2015, after two laws that uh, give uh, uh, the government of the three sites to the two autonomous provinces of Bolzano and Trento and uh, to Lombardy region. Uh, we act, uh, uh, I can say, a soft government of the park uh, because there is, there is a steering committee that works uh, together of, of politicians and uh, uh, we have uh, guidelines in every uh, part of our uh, work and uh, for example the, the way uh, we have arrived here is because uh, the steering committee has licensed uh, uh, the guidelines for the sustainable tourism in uh, uh, 2017 and I think then in only these four years uh, uh, we have changed uh, the approach to the, the local people, to the local communities uh, in many ways uh, and I think that's uh, the, the good way that uh, we can help uh, for the local development. Thank you. A few words uh, from the Trentino part. Uh, we support, Trento supported uh, the decision to apply to the Charter because uh, um, Trentino has already joined the Charter uh, for the, uh, with the whole system of the natural protected areas. We have a national park and two, two regional parks, Adamello Print and Paneveggio, Paleso Martino, and 10 natural uh, reserve uh, areas. And, uh, and so in this way, uh, all the system, all the uh, uh, natural area system of Trentino has joined the charter. It's very important for us. And uh, um, we start with a, a document, um, the guidelines uh, for the uh, sustainable tourism uh, development 
in the national park and the, the charter is the first the first step uh, of, of this uh, uh, strategy and uh, my colleague has uh, said that uh, uh, we have a particular history and uh, an unusual governance with three regions uh, two languages uh, high mountains which separates and and some sometimes separate sometimes link links uh, uh, linked uh, the, the the regions and uh, and so uh, now we uh, are building the plan and the rules and the common rules of the park but uh, and and uh, the charter is a, a way to to collaborate to collaborate to work together with real actions on the territory to uh, involve local population and uh, to have uh, bottom up actions thank you thank you very much i said just at the beginning and uh, ignias mentioned it too about those three pillars of sustainability economic environmental and social and here you see a, a very fine example of that social cohesion that comes from working uh, through the methodology of, of the Charter for Sustainable Tourism. Um, we're going to stay in Italy for our next set of um, uh, awards. I said at the beginning that uh, becoming part of the Charter process is a sustainable journey. Some of you may have seen our sustainable journey film that we were showing outside in the foyer uh, when you were arriving. And for those first four parks that we've just welcomed into our charter network, into our family, thank you very much for coming. But for the others who've been on that journey a little bit longer, their journey continues. Because every five years, we ask you to, um, to, re to be reevaluated. Because sustainability, as I said earlier, is a choice and it's an ongoing choice. It's not just a ticket, it's not just a label, it's not just a sticker that you put on saying we are now sustainable. Well, first of all, somebody has to come along and check that you are sustainable. Um, but it's a, a process of continual improvement. So we're especially delighted uh, for those parks who've who'd stayed in that journey and are now with us to receive their uh, further evaluations, their re-evaluations. And as I said, we're going to stay in Italy and I'm very, very grateful for the work of Feder Parque. Uh, there are representatives of Feder Parque here, the, the network of, uh, of uh, parks in Italy and our section representatives in, it, in Italy. And I know that they've done a phenomenal work um, encouraging and supporting and advising on the charter process to the parks in Italy. And I think it's testament to that, to see how many parks uh, from Italy are here receiving for the first time and receiving their renewal certificates. So thank you so much uh, for that fantastic effort. But the effort, of course, is really concentrated in the parks themselves. Um, so I'll do, again, I'll do my best with the pronunciation. Please correct me. Um, so we're first going to go to Polino National Park. So if Polino would like to come and receive your re-evaluation. I speak Italian. I am very proud, as president of the park, to receive from President Schultz this confirmation. For us, it was a confirmation. Five years ago, we were here in the seat of the Parliament European. Sorry. I am very happy to receive this confirmation. Five years ago, we were in the European Parliament.
caricato di tante responsabilità e dopo cinque anni siamo molto contenti del giudizio che i valutatori hanno dato al nostro parco. So, five years ago we were in the European Parliament, we received the first certification, who give, uh, gave us a lot of uh, responsibilities, and after, after five years we are very happy to be again here, and uh, the, uh, re, um, the evaluator, the verifiers, uh, said that everything was okay, so approved our re renewal. Il Parco Nazionale del Polino è un parco molto complesso perché è enorme, è grande, 200.000 ettari, due regioni, tre province e 56 comuni. So the Parco of Polino is uh, really huge, it's really, really big, two regions, uh, three, three provinces, uh, 57 co uh, municipalities, so it's very big. It's the biggest uh, park in Italy. E quindi mettere in campo un rapporto tra le istituzioni pubbliche e gli operatori privati del settore turistico ed economico è difficile, però noi riteniamo di esserci riusciti. E... Uh. As you can imagine, to put together oh, so many stakeholders, public and private, is very, very challenging, but we consider that we reach to, to, to do it. So thank you very much. Ok, speriamo per i prossimi anni di fare un lavoro altrettanto importante per i parchi italiani, per la Federparchi e per Europarchi. Grazie a tutti. We hope to continue like this for the first... Uh, for the next five years for Feder Park, for our park, for Euro Park. Thank you. We look forward to seeing you in five years' time. And often our uh, charter awards, you may have noticed, go to mountain parks or terrestrial parks. And uh, there's a very important sector that I'm glad to say is growing and is represented by our next uh, Charter Awards, and that is marine protected areas. The Charter for Sustainable Tourism is as valid and important for tourism that takes place in the marine and coastal areas as it is in the mountains uh, and in the terrestrial parks. So I'd like to welcome the Torre Serrano Marine Protected Area to come and receive your award. Buonasera a tutti, anch'io mi esprimerò in italiano, poi se avete bisogno ci sarà la traduttrice. L'area marina protetta d'Ore del Cerrano è un'area marina che si trova in Abruzzo, in provincia di Teramo, i due comuni sono eh, Silvi e Pineto. Noi eh, vogliamo ringraziare Europark e Federparchi per questo percorso, per noi molto importante perché la nostra, sì è vero che è un'area marina piccola, quindi un territorio non grande, però è un territorio che è una destinazione turistica molto importante per l'Abruzzo, molto importante per la provincia di Teramo, dove ovviamente la pressione antropica non è poca. Quindi per noi eh, è stato molto importante avere una bussola che ci potesse guidare nel tutelare un ambiente, ma nello stesso tempo non vietare una fruizione di questo ambiente. Quindi, il turismo responsabile, quindi la Carta Europea del Turismo ci ha dato la possibilità di, del turismo sostenibile, ci ha dato la possibilità di fare queste attività nel rispetto e nella tutela dell'ambiente. Questo l'abbiamo potuto fare grazie all'impegno ovviamente delle due amministrazioni comunali, che qui ho i due sindaci presenti, e grazie anche agli operatori che sono anche qui presenti, che con noi hanno deciso di 
percorrere questa strada che vi assicuro all'inizio non facile. Nel 2014 siamo stati la prima area marina protetta certificata, oggi siamo al rinnovo e già gli operatori ci chiedono di pensare alla fase 2, quindi alla certificazione degli stessi operatori. Grazie. So instead of to translate, I will just uh, make a, a summary. Uh, Torre Cerrano is a um, marine protected area, so very, um, it's a very uh, high uh, tourist destination, so they have to deal with a lot of tourists. They have two uh, municipalities that, uh, thanks to the, the charter, started to work together and to find a way to manage the tourism in a sustainable way. So to let people uh, profit of the place at the same time to respect and to protect the place. And uh, uh, now they are very proud because they are also working very well with the local uh, uh, private um, uh, stakeholders. And so they want to continue like this in the future. Thank you. I'm one of the mayors, Robert Verrocchio, of the city of Pineto, and he is the mayor of the city of Silvi. We have honored of this, of, uh, of the second time we've been here in uh, the last uh, four years. And uh, our marine protected area is in uh, ten, 10 years, so it's our 10th anniversary this, this year. And we're very, very happy, and this uh, occasion for, for us is, uh, is a way to encourage the environment, encourage our city, and to encourage our tour operators and the stakeholders to keep going uh, ahead on, the, on this way. I'd like to, a special thanks to Europark that's with us in this, uh, in this, uh, this great program that we're bringing uh, ahead all, all together. Thank you very much. Mi esprimo in italiano anch'io, ringrazio diciamo, Europark per questo riconoscimento e soprattutto il grande lavoro che sta, svolge sta svolgendo la Torre di Cerrano insieme ai due comuni per portare avanti questo turismo ecosostenibile sul nostro territorio. Un territorio difficile perché si partiva da un'antropizzazione eh, diciamo, neg negli anni importante e dunque questo diciamo, ritorno alla tutela ambientale ma soprattutto a un turismo che guarda alla ecosostenibilità eh, è un grande lavoro di impegno appunto della, del parco Torre del Cerrano e, e tutti i, diciamo, gli enti preposti che ci certificano oggi questo eh, bellissimo diciamo, eh, riconoscimento. Grazie. Again, thank you very much. The, the territory is quite complicated, but thanks to the Charter, to the work that the area is doing. Thank you. Again, it's uh, great to see another example of the regions, Mr. Beaver, and the, and the communities of that region and their political representatives really taking action on the ground. It's more than just words on a piece of paper. Um, really committing to sustainable actions to improve their environment, to retain their social cohesion and their economies, and of course to, um, to look to having a lighter touch uh, on our planet in order to uh, mitigate and eventually adapt to the climate change that's upon us. Um, so yeah, fantastic work there by the communities and the, the regions there. We're staying in Italy still, uh, and I'd like to move to the Alta Murcia uh, National Park. So please come and receive your award. Io 
parlerò in italiano, so, anch'io parlerò in italiano. Io... <coughs> Grazie per questa attestazione che per noi rappresenta un importante riconoscimento per quello che il parco in questi anni ha fatto, ha lavorato molto per la promozione dello sviluppo sostenibile. Noi nei prossimi anni lavoreremo molto sulla fruibilità del nostro patrimonio archeologico, culturale, paleontologico, lavoreremo molto sulla formazione degli operatori turistici e sul migliorare i servizi turistici nel nostro parco. Io sono So, thank you very much for the charter, for this award. In the next year, our goal will be to work a lot about culture, um, heritage, about uh, um, paleontological and um, archaeological uh, heritage, and uh, training for um, operators for private uh, businesses. Grazie. Okay. <laughs> thank you. <laughs> It was easy. Our last Italian park for now, we're heading to the Apennino Tosca Emiliano National Park. Good afternoon. Sorry, I don't speak English, but uh, I have a study yesterday. <laughs> uh, thank you for this uh, certification. It's very important uh, for uh, the um, Parco Appennino Tosco Emiliano National Park. Uh, in the future, uh, we'll uh, work to improve and involve the um, population and uh, the business uh, activity, a private activity. Thank you so much. Thank you. Don't go too far. Um, we were very proud as Europark to be part of the CITO project. And the CITO project, uh, the lead partners are the Emilia Romano um, region. And uh, it's been a fantastic project to be a part of with uh, seven partners across the central Eastern European region. And uh, as I mentioned just briefly earlier, the film A Sustainable Journey, uh, which you may have seen uh, out in the foyer, but we'll certainly make sure you get another opportunity to see it, uh, was one of the communication deliverables uh, from the CITO project. And I'm very proud to say has in fact won four international film awards uh, for its production. So uh, something I think the project is very proud of and we in Europark are delighted to have been a part of um, producing that. Um, but there were lots of other exciting things that's been part of the CETO project. And I'd like to hand over to my colleague, Estefania, uh, to interrogate our uh, colleagues here and find out a bit more about it. Thanks. Yes, thank you very much. Maybe I will show you some uh, uh, slides about the project because I think it can be very interesting for all of you. If my colleague, exactly. So this is a project that Europark with other partners is implementing and how you can see the aim is again to make tourism a real driver for natural protection and local socio-economic well-being. So we have uh, several partners from several uh, European countries, uh, also east of Europe. And one uh, next slide, please. And one of the output of the project is this uh, CITO network and CITO platform. Uh, the aim is to create a sort of association uh, to put together in a platform uh, a practitioners in natural conservation and sustainable tourism. So please join the network and join the platform because it's a place to discuss and to use all your knowledge for uh, others also and to learn so it's a good opportunity for everybody 
And uh, here you can find uh, the link uh, for, of the project that is still ongoing. Also, the several uh, steps of the, the project and the uh, different output that some of them are already available on the, on the website. One of them is the movie that uh, is ongoing outside that you will show later also. And uh, among them, um, some protected areas were asked to, to participate to project um, as a action pi pilot action plan. And uh, for me, uh, the question was how the parks reach to um, make this uh, work in connection with the charter. And uh, Apennino Tosco Emiliano is one of the parks who tested the project. So I would like to ask uh, to my colleague and friend <laughs> to, to say something about how they worked with the CITO and the charter together. Thank you. Good afternoon. So yes, we, we were one of the pilot areas selected by the Emilia Romagna region for the CITO projects. And uh, it was as the the charter and the CITO deal with sustainable tourism, it was not easy, but we can reach a good solution because we, the CITO project became a part of uh, our action plan for the European Charter. So uh, the two are strict, strictly connected in our uh, planning and uh, also because of for both of them we involve the local stakeholders at local level for the CITO project and of course at park level for the European Charter and both the CITO project and the European Charter have, are um, part of uh, the action plan of our biosphere reserves, so UNESCO biosphere reserves. So it's sustainable tourism is one of our main uh, stream, I can say, of our management. So I hope that's given you some inspiration. We've heard from others this, uh, this, this afternoon about, in fact, Robbie himself mentioned about leader uh, projects, uh, leader funding, and there we're using interreg uh, regional fundings uh, to help move forward an agenda on sustainable tourism. Uh, and certainly with the, the, the Charter for Sustainable Tourism at the heart, there is definitely some opportunities in European fundings uh, to develop your strategies, your action plans and your sustainable tourism on the ground. So I hope that's, that's given you some ideas uh, on future potential fundings and there might even be some partners of those projects here in the room. So certainly something to have a chat about over tea or coffee this afternoon or even a drink uh, later this evening. Um, we have to do a little bit of uh, stage management now because I now have to take the role of Igneous and uh, my colleague Stefania will uh, introduce the, the next uh, awardees. Uh, thankfully with her uh, fluency in several languages I can assure you that the pronunciation of the parks uh, coming forward <laughs> should be uh, less, uh, well, certainly nicer than, than mine. So thank you very much for my part of the the awarding ceremony and I shall see you at the, at the other side when I give you over your certificates. Thanks for now. Goodbye. Okay, thank you very much, Carol. So we can continue our uh, award. And now we continue with some uh, renew certified areas. I don't know if it's, I speak enough. Okay, we start from uh, Spain. I don't know if uh, Sierra Nevada National Park is here. <laughs> Unfortunately, I'm afraid not. Indeed, we have uh, some uh, parks that were not possible, uh, not, were not able to join us. We are very sorry for this, but of course, it's important to mention them. And Sierra Nevada is a park that worked a lot with the Charter since several years, so we would like to make a big applause for them and look at the beautiful pictures that they are sent to us. <laughs> so we can continue with Italy. We are sorry, I I'm, I'm feel a little bit sorry because we are a lot of Italians here today. 
but uh, indeed uh, that show how much uh, is the charter is developed in Italy and we um, we can continue with Colline Metallifere and National Park. Um, Tuscan Mining UNESCO Global Geopark, Colline Metallifere, is very happy to be here for the second time uh, at award, uh, award ceremony. Uh, the European Charter represents for uh, us an important experience to build collaboration and cooperation uh, in our territory and uh, uh, to establish an important private-public partnership toward a sustainable tourism and a sustainable development. Uh, we hope to remain in this network for many years. Thanks to Europark and thanks to uh, Federparki. Thank you. Bye. Thank you very much. And we continue now with another park that unfortunately is not here. Loire Anjou Touraine Nature Regional, Nature Regional Park. A big applause for them. <laughs> Maybe here we can have a look to the pictures of the park that also very interesting. And finally, for this group, I would like to call on the stage, in some way, from Portugal, Montagna Magicas. Good afternoon to all of you. In Portuguese, boa tarde a todos os presentes. Thank you um, for the reward of the certificate. And uh, I would just like to remember the 6th of November 2013. Just next door in the European Parliament, we received for the first time the European Charter for Sustainable Tourism. It was extremely important for our region. Since uh, 1991, we have been working together, seven municipalities, 1,500 square kilometers of uh, a territory in the north center of Portugal. We've been working, we started working with the basis of the LEADER program. Many of you probably know what the LEADER program is, and we have been working since then on this project. We have lots of uh, differences, political uh, and administrative boundaries, but that isn't uh, a difficulty. 
it's a challenge. It's an everyday challenge so that the Magic Mountains are there for anybody to see and to visit. The ones that were there in 2017 and had the privilege to be at the conference, the Europark conference, uh, are welcome to come once again. And to all the others that were not there in 2017, we send you an invitation to visit us. Thank you very much. I would like to profit uh, again of this opportunity to have a Montagna Magicas here because uh, they are doing uh, a very interesting uh, work uh, in rural development. Uh, and uh, Mr. Bewer uh, already said something about uh, the priorities of the Committee of Regions. Uh, rural development uh, through the tourism, uh, agriculture, uh, etc., are very uh, are, is a topic very important for the Committee of Regions. So I think it's very important to, to ask uh, to, this, uh, to this park, this uh, territory, uh, some information more about what exactly Montagna Magicas is, uh, because uh, it's larger than uh, the park, and how they are working for rural development uh, using the charter. Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you for the question. Well, the Magic Mountains are not properly a park. Formerly, they are not a park. They are predominantly a rural and mountainous territory situated in the center north of Portugal, as I said a few moments ago, with five classified areas, four Natura 2000 uh, areas and a UNESCO geopark as well. This territory has been touristically uh, promoted under the touristic brand of Magic Mountains, a brand that is managed by a local action group, a leader local action group, uh, and the regional development association called Adri Mag. The existence of, uh, and of excellent natural heritage linked with the classified areas came to be that Adri Mag and the seven municipalities of which we have here uh, two mayors and two council members as well of another two municipalities developed a sustainable tourism development strategy based on the principles of the European Charter with special aim on nature, nature tourism. We used as well the seven pillars of the leader program, but the most important ones are the bottom-up approach. Networking is extremely important. Cooperation and a local development strategy. I stress these four of the seven uh, leader objectives. The objective of Adrimag and on a sustainable tourism strategy for this territory also came as a result of Adrimag's long experience in the local development and the knowledge of the reality of this territory, namely its strengths, the natural and the cultural resources, and also knowing which are our weaknesses and our needs as well. In these 28 years of existence, Adrimag has been developing an important job, working closely, and this is the most important, with the local agents, bringing to this regional, national and European funds and implementing several projects and programs. The most important example is LEADER. Since 1991, Adrimag has been managing LEADER in this region. Many partners of the European Charter of Sustainable Tourism had projects submitted to and approved by Adrimag and by doing so were involved in the local strategy defined by the local action group members. Many of these projects had and have to do with rural tourism, local restaurants, touristic animation, handicraft and local products. <coughs> Sorry, This work has been very important not only in the improvement of the quality of life of the local population but also to create links and bonds of confidence and trust with the enterprises and the local entities, facilitating the establishment of partnerships, developing networking that is the core importance for the sustainable touristic development of this territory. Thank you.
So we can continue with the last uh, group of rewarded areas. Now I will have some difficulties with the pronunciation, so sorry for that. Uh, we are very happy to have uh, a different country, finally, <laughs> after <laughs> uh, so many Italians and uh, Mediterranean in some way parks, uh, and Estonia, of course. So we, this time we will uh, award Zemaitia National Park. Please come here. Hello, dear colleagues. I just want to say big thanks for Europark for this nice and uh, fruitful journey. Uh, for us, the certificate is quite important because um, uh, during this process, recertification process, uh, we get uh, a lot of interesting discussions with our stakeholders and uh, we made uh, a nice strategy for next uh, five years period. And of course, I would like to say a big thanks for my staff uh, who work very hard during this recertification process and uh, of course for our stakeholders. And I want to say some words in our national language. This is message for my staff. Didelis dieko mūsų kolektyvo uždėtelį dėdelį darbą ir dar didesnis dieko mūsų partneriam ir draugam gyvenantim ir dirbantim teritorijų. Thank you very much. Okay. So next park is Natia, I guess, it's from Spain, Doniana. No. So again, a big applause for Doniana National Park. And now we come back to Italy with the Sibillini National Park. Very few words. I'm very proud to be here for the fourth time. This is the fourth time that uh, Sibilini National Park achieved this certificate. It was the first park in Italy working with uh, Charter for Sustainable Tourism. And uh, for us, after the earthquake, the this uh, re renovation, this charter renovation was also an occasion to renovate uh, deals with uh, tourist operator and uh, municipalities to plan and achieve 99 projects and for a budget for over two, 20 million of euro. Thank you, Europark. Yes, indeed, the Sibillini Park was uh, really among the first, first parks uh, testing and continuing the charter. We are very happy to see that for them the charter is still a useful tool and they are continuing to renew it. And definitely it's important to remember the terrible uh, tra tragedy that they have uh, two, three years ago, I don't remember now, three years ago. Um, had, uh, had, uh, exactly so, and the charter indeed uh, is helping them uh, to 
to continue working with uh, everybody, with the local stakeholders. But I would, I'm very happy to finish with uh, uh, a very uh, Nordic country, because uh, I come from south of Italy. And some years ago, I had to follow, uh, I was invited for a meeting uh, in this park, and it was in December. So it's really in the north, and I was uh, terrified at the idea to spend one week without see the sun because it's completely dark in December. And I can say to you that it was amazing, fantastic, really a big experience for me. So I'm very happy <laughs> to, to have visited this park in winter. So I suggest to all of you to go there. So I'm very happy to call Palace Ilan Studuri National Park on the stage. I think I was not the last one, so I don't have a 25 minutes <laughs> presentation. <laughs> can see you hardly can wait. I, I skip. Anyway, uh, I, I can start from the 1930s when we, we were established. But, uh, thank you very much for your park and uh, charter and. There's a lot of great people back in, in park and the whole park and wildlife Finland organization is, is uh, following and uh, doing the work we are doing. And uh, we really are uh, preparing and uh, make things in park more sustainable now than five years ago when we, when we started the charter. And, uh, it's a excellent uh, stepping stones and, and, and uh, rules to follow. And there's uh, great stakeholders, businesses. We have, unfortunately, not, not all 150 are here, but uh, maybe it's luckily so. Uh, but they have done a, a lot of work, and there's great. I can say world leading organizations and, and companies who are doing a sustainable tourism business in, in north north back there. And uh, I think this uh, charter is uh, the networking has been said dozens of times today already, but I, I think it's the main main idea for us to be also in, in part of the charter network. Because alone we are just a dot or, or area somewhere there in the very far back out. And uh, the networking is, is working together. And that's the point, I think, when somebody is asking why we are in, in charter area. Thank you for all, and see you in North. OK, very good. So I think we can uh, close this part. A big applause again for all the parks that are here. And also for the parks that are not here for your uh, wonderful uh, work. We will have now a coffee break and then we will continue with another very interesting part, a surprise. Okay, <laughs> see you later. Okay, may I have your attention, please? Yes, okay. So my name is Barbara, some of you know me already. I am the Communications and Marketing Manager of the Europark Federation. And today I'm here to introduce you a very special award. So we have been so far awarding protected areas. 
16 today to be uh, more clear. Maybe we can see the presentation just so that I can show you our brand new map. So we are today 110 sustainable destinations in 16 countries. And these 110 sustainable destinations include two transboundary destinations. This means that protected areas are cooperating across their borders. So I would just invite you to applause because I think 110 to, uh, in 10, it's a really um, important number. So an applause to all of you. And as all of you know, um, the Charter is a methodology that enables you to establish a different connection within your territory. So through the Charter methodology that you have all successfully implemented, you are able to sit around the same table, probably politicians, political groups, governmental organizations, but also you are able to start this network of partners, business partners within your local community. Am I right? Yes, I can see some people nodding. Okay. So, in fact, it's through the implementation of Charter Part 2 and Charter Part 3, um, known as Sustainable Business Partners and Sustainable Tour Operators, that you are able to implement this uh, methodology and award your own uh, partners. Um, there are around 550 partners currently working with sustainable destinations from all over Europe. Just in Spain, they have more than 500. So um, they have done um, huge work on the establishment of Charter Part 2, Sustainable Business Partners. Um, and some of those businesses are actually with us here today. Why is that? Well, Europark decided to launch this year the Europark Star Awards. And for the first time, we will be awarding business partners who are doing a tremendous effort towards uh, sustainability. They are implementing, they are the ones in the front line working for sustainability, inspiring their visitors, reducing their impacts on the environment, innovating, and especially working together. So we have launched the first edition of the Star Awards and we have looked at five special categories. Um, we have invited all those partners across Europe that are working under Charter Part 2 or Charter Part 3 um, and we invited them to apply to one of the five categories that you see in your screen. Um, although there was a mandatory, a mandatory one, which was contribution to conservation, because in the end this is what we want. We want that parks establish a deep commitment to preserving their natural and cultural heritage. Then, after parks have submitted their applications, they um, were assessed by a national jury composed by Europark National Section, um, and then an international jury made of experts from all over Europe came together to decide the final uh, winner of each one of these categories. So I'm really proud to um, invite on stage uh, Phil Holden, who is the chair of our international jury and he is also the director of the Shropshire AONB. So please, Phil, come on stage. Uh, thank you. It's uh, uh, very nice to be here to represent the international panel, but I also work for a protected area that you see in front of you. Um, if I get any names wrong, then you can have a go at Shropshire Hills area of outstanding natural beauty later on. Uh, je voudrais dire aussi que c'est vraiment un grand plaisir d'être ici en Bruxelles entre des amis uh, en anglais et en européen. Uh, parlons sur la collaboration. Um, this is where my my uh, my my area is in the in the centre of England, and I I did put a map with uh, the whole of Europe on deliberately. Um, so I was a little nervous when Carol asked me to uh, to present the awards, but then I remembered that I had done this once before, 
in the Shropshire Hills, we used to run a sustainable business scheme and we did awards. This is it in, in 2011. Um, we, we made a prize of local food and this farmer, Trevor, uh, won some of his own food uh, back in the prize. We made the prize before we knew who was going to win. These are, these are the other, other winners of our awards. Um, I'm pleased to say we've been able to stay in the charter, but we don't unfortunately run these awards anymore um, or the, the sustainable business scheme either. We've had cuts in our central government and local government funding. Um, in the eight years since, since this photograph was taken, um, some of sustainability has been brought into the mainstream. Um, certainly in our area, some of it has dropped away from political priorities. But as we know, the issues have not gone away. Uh, of course, we face a climate emergency now. Uh, some, perhaps fewer people, importantly, are also talking about nature decline as an emergency. Uh, in the UK, three quarters of children spend less time outdoors than people held in prison. To solve these um, issues, we need practical solutions and we need cooperation, probably on a greater scale than humans have achieved before. We also know that three quarters of people who have an emotional connection to nature through their experiences um, show in behavior in favor of the environment. So looking at the information for the Star Awards uh, was, was very uh, inspiring and it's going to be it's a real pleasure to, to meet some of the winners today. Uh, as Barbara said, it is the first time the Star Awards has, has been run and the entries from across Europe, the standard was, was very high. And I just want to say you are, you are demonstrating the real practical action and solutions and enabling people's experience of nature and cooperating in both your local areas and through the Charter. Um, and, and we congratulate you. This has never been more important, as we know. I was struck by the, the, the eight years from the past and, and the difference we need to make in the next eight years uh, we need to have moved a long way to net zero and nature recovery in that next time. If we are to succeed, it is exactly through the kind of action and cooperation like yours that that will be done. So um, I'd like to move to the first award um, for the category of contribution to conservation. Um, and the winner is Delta Pole from Spain, from the Ebro Delta. Do come forward. <laughs> this was certainly a, a unanimous decision of the panel. Um, this business started a, a long time ago in 1983 doing fantastic environmental education work and work with the manual cultivation of rice, which you can see outside and, uh, and talk to them. Do, do come and say something. I'm not offering to translate. Bueno, eh, muchas gracias por este premio. Eh, primero, explicar un poco eh, nuestro proyecto en qué consiste. Eh, esto es una idea que surge de Polet eh, cuando era niño eh, en los arrozales del Delta del Ebro. Allí aprendió el cultivo del arroz, cuando el cultivo se hacía con las manos. La llegada de la mecanización le dejó sin trabajo y la idea de conservar todos los saberes de la gente de hacer cultivos con las manos fue lo que motivó a continuar con esta sabiduría enseñándosela a los hijos. Eh, 
Esto de aquí va pasando el tiempo, llegan los años 80 y como regidor del Ayuntamiento de Deltebre, eh, para evitar que se desecaran unas lagunas y para poder conservar los espacios naturales del Delta eh, por, contra la, la, la agresión agrícola y la agresión eh, turística, eh, hacen un parque natural. Eh, el hecho de hacer un parque natural en esos tiempos provoca mucha tensión entre la población local y eh, esto motiva a que hayamos hecho una empresa que precisamente eh, pongamos en valor los espacios naturales y la cultura local. Thank you very much. I will summarize it. Um, this project uh, was born many years ago when, my, when our father, uh, Paulette, was a child. He used to work with his father in the rice fields and he learned how to grow rice manually because there was no other way to do that at that time. Um, then with the mechanization, uh, there were no jobs and, in the fields and he started working in the council when in the 80s they created the natural park of Ebro Delta to protect the natural areas. Um, Delta Palette was born because my father has always had a wonderful memory of working in the rice fields. So he wanted to transmit this knowledge of how to grow rice in a natural way. Um, my father and my brother want to show Ebro Delta, which has an outstanding natural beauty and also its traditional culture. Thank you. Thank you. So, the next category is for innovation, and I'm very pleased to say the winner is for play from Italy, to come down. This company is using these fantastic small electric vehicles in the coastal dunes natural reserve, come through. Good afternoon. I try to say just few words in English, <laughs> but it's not my language, so I hope not to kill it. Um, our project uh, was born five years ago uh, in Ostuni. We live in a beautiful town, the white town, and uh, in a beautiful country, Apulia. And uh, many people come there for the beaches and for food. But uh, we wanted to find uh, a way to help people, visitors, uh, and uh, guests, uh, and tourists uh, to discover how rich uh, uh, is our territory. It has uh, a lot of uh, riches in, uh, in, hist in history, in nature, and in culture. And uh, we want to find uh, a new way, and, uh, but a way that was at the same time uh, that respects uh, uh, nature and people. And so we had uh, at that time uh, one Twizy. It is an Amini electric car. And uh, we find, found that it was uh, uh, very easy to drive and funny. And maybe it was uh, um, uh, helpful for our uh, aims. And uh, at that point, we met uh, Parco Dune Costiere, that is near Ostuni, and uh, we mixed together uh, what uh, we have and what uh, they had. And uh, we met a lot of experts and uh, producers, uh, farmers, uh, and people who, who helped us, and uh, we uh, grown together. And um, we I think that uh, we need accessible, uh, sustainable uh, tourism also to people who uh, has not, uh, um, is not able to do a lot of kilometers uh, on foot or riding a bike. And uh, most of all, I think that is a, a funny way to, uh, to discover our territory. 
And um, we are very proud about these uh, awards. Normally, we recharge uh, Twitzy, and this award recharges us. <laughs> and we hope to, <laughs> to run for a lot of kilometers and uh, on the right direction. Thanks. So the category reducing impact on the environment and our winner of this is La Calma, a restaurant near Barcelona. Come on. One of the lovely things about judging was uh, to find all these places that you want to go and I have to say your food looked fantastic. Thank you very much. Um, I want to say some words in uh, congratulations, Italia. Uh, well, this looks, I, I hope, next year. <laughs> we can come here next year if you want, but you can also do in Italy because more people from Italy than other places in the world. <laughs> so, no problem. Uh, parabéns, Portugal. Parabéns, te he fedo. Muito bueno trabajo. Las, las montañas de la mágicas. Eh, Lituania is Vikinu. And uh, Okinoki will come to Finland. Finland, sorry. Well, my Lituanian issue. Anyway. Well, uh, thank you very much. We were in as a cook uh, because uh, that's the work we do. We cook in, in La Calma. We, are in, uh, we belong to the uh, natural park of Munseñ, which is like 40 kilometers from Barcelona. It's a, a biosphere reserve by the UNESCO. And uh, we ran this business in 2004. Uh, in 2004, we, we came we, from, from the Barcelona city. We decided to move to the mountains and then start a new, a new project. In that time, our sons and our daughter was uh, 18 and 17 years old. That means that they nearly born in there. And uh, this uh, award, which uh, you are giving to us, and we are very proud of it, uh, it represents that we are running a business in a place, in a natural park, and not doing anything wrong or anything bad for the environment of where we are. That means that the house where we're running is uh, completely uh, autonomous. Heating comes from the, uh, from the forest around the area. Water comes from the ceiling and also from the natural pipe. Electricity we made with sand. And what's the water we do with also in a biological system? So that means that it is possible today to make a tourist uh, activity in a place, in a natural, in a protected area, which is more than being a central of Barcelona or Brussels or London or whatever. And uh, it is possible to run a business like this in a place and not having, uh, I will say, the, the, this, this uh, expanding or uh, this uh, wrong thing on the on the on the climate emergency. Um, there is a, a balance. Uh, when we came, they sent us an email saying, explain, try to explain the difficulty or not between a local company, a stakeholder, and the government. The natural park where we are is running by the government, like most of the governments that, that are here. And it's not always easy to find out a place and a relationship between local uh, uh, activities like us, private uh, companies, and the local government. In this case, is Diputación de Barcelona, which is the government in Barcelona. Uh, we have to say that the, there is a balance, always, is because there are two different speeds. You want one speed and then win another. But at the end of the day, uh, we are now here because one day Diputación de Barcelona, the government, uh, decide to give us the opportunity to run a business in there. It's, an, uh, it's a quite difficult place because it's a really good protected area. 
uh, many people was worried about if it was going to be a wrong uh, decision, but I can say that is uh, now is a successful business. Um, this morning, uh, Ignace uh, gave us some figures. He said that 10% of the global GDP become from the tourist industry. He also said that only 10% of the uh, local uh, of the industry becomes to, from the local uh, productors. As you can see, we were in this because we belong to the community called um, Slow Food, which it was born in Italy at the end of uh, 80s. Now is uh, around the world. In Catalonia, it's a special place where it's very, very strong. In that time, we found a movement called uh, Cuines, Cuineras, Catalunya, Kilometra Zero, what means cookers, men, women, uh, local, local productors. And uh, today, uh, we are working very hard. Um, we want to, to send a message to this 10% tourist uh, industry where most of them are restaurants. Uh, we want our message is it is possible to make a restaurant in a good way in a balance with nature. It works, it is possible and uh, is no more an option. Uh, it has to be done because uh, instead of that uh, you see these days in Madrid we are talking about the emergency and uh, the responsibility of the restaurants and the cookers around the world in, in Spain, in Italy, in all Europe is change this uh, problem in a challenge. So that, that was, that's uh, our message to all the cookers and all the restaurants. And I want to say goodbye in my language, which is Catalan. Moltes felicitats, gent de les terres de, del Fraser, Planoles i companyia, els de Terres de l'Ebre, del Tebre i Caberos. Thank you very much, and see you next year, probably in Italy, I will say. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you very much, and congratulations. Um, our other two winners are unfortunately not here, um, but we're going to do uh, the, the award anyway. Building uh, my community. Um, the winner here is uh, a company called Sudrandos in the Cévennes National Park. Uh, Olivier from there was not able to come. Um, they set up in 1984 with a, a house in the forest, worked closely with the Forest Protection Office, their travel agency, and run uh, guided walks in France, but also uh, other other countries. They've worked with the uh, Savannes National Park for uh, since 2014, um, looking at themes protecting sensitive areas and particularly doing a lot with local or, and organic food and making sure their their suppliers and the companies they work with are, are local. So very, very strong links into the community um, and that's why they won that category. So can we give them a round of applause, please? And our last, um, our last category was communicating the values. The nice thing about the awards is that there was a real variety of, of businesses in the same way as with the Charter Parks. We have big and small and different types. Um, this was a, a really interesting one, um, a, a hotel um, in the Adamello Brenta National Park in Italy, uh, the Hotel Caminetto. Um, unfortunately, Marco can't be here, but I gather someone from, from the park is, is coming to collect the prize for them. So, thank you. I'm going to say while he's there that um, the, uh, the winners will all be in the, the next Europark uh, Federation uh, newsletter magazine, so really do look them up and, uh, and have a good look at what they've done. Good afternoon and congratulations at all. I am so happy to be here and at the same time so proud because uh, exactly one year ago I was here to take the third 
renovation of uh, the certificate, the chats for the Parco Naturale de Melo Brenta. And today I'm here to take this uh, special award for one uh, park, for um, Adamello Brenta Natural Park Quality Hotel. That is a quality mark to select a hotel to use a particular policy about sustainability. And uh, Caminetto is uh, one of that hotel in the Parco Naturale del Bano Brenta and uh, I show the best one because <laughs> this award is very important. Thank you so much at all. So that's that's the end of the awards. I, th I think, I, will you explain how the voting is going to, Barbara's going to do that because you understand that better than I do. So, yes. Thank, Thank you. you. Okay. So, congratulations to all the awardees. It was really, really inspiring to read your um, stories and the way you conduct your business. And I hope that these stories will reach out to the other partners working with sustainable destinations um, and maybe they can themselves improve their um, impact, improve their communications, improve their and on an innovative way um, and work better with their parks. So congratulations once more. But this is not over. There is still something coming. Um, you know that we really enjoy surprises, right? So there is a second phase of the Star Awards. We thought that our national jury and our international jury were not enough to recognize who would be the final of the final of the final winners. So from tomorrow onwards, there will be an online campaign running, an online voting system. And the idea is um, everyone in this herd can vote and select who will be one of the winners that will attend Europark Conference 2020. Okay? So what we want to do is to bring one of you to Austria. Our conference will be in October next year. We want you to come to Austria to tell your story to an audience of around 400 people. I hope you can fit uh, for the, I'm sure you will, uh, for the challenge. Um, so the online uh, campaign will run until the end of January. You just need to try to collect as many votes as possible. It will run on Facebook. Um, you will get all this information tomorrow on your email inboxes, along with the photos of this ceremony, by the way. Um, and. Um, we, we would like you to come to our conference, not yourself, but all, you and a technician of your park, because we really want to see uh, this connection um, being strengthened. Okay, so thank you once more. I ask for another applause for the Star Award winners, and we promise, promise to be back in two years' time. Okay, and I will pass you on to Carol. Who will tell us something important? And I can, I can move the slides Here from this. Run. Yeah, we're coming to the end of our award ceremony. And again, can I just also add my congratulations to all the Star Award winners and also to all of those who entered the awards. Um, it, as Barbara just said, it really was an inspiration for us. This is the first time we've ever done this. And we were just amazed at the quality of work that's happening in our uh, parks and protected areas by the private businesses that are working alongside us. So thank you all so very much. And uh, I really look forward to reading the stories uh, in two years' time. So we'll run the Star Awards every two years. Um, as Barbara's also already just said, um, open for voting as of tomorrow, so start your campaigns now. Get your friends and families and anybody else who you know to be voting for your uh, business to be the top Star Awards uh, for 2020. And we will look forward to inviting you and having you with us in Austria in October of next year. So, um, yeah, good luck with that. Voting will start tomorrow. But I wanted to just in the last few minutes, take an opportunity to celebrate the work of perhaps the unsung heroes of our Charter for Sustainable Tourism. We don't often get the opportunity to do this. 
but all of you, all of the parks who are here in this room, all of your dossiers, all of the Verify reports were read by a group of heroes who are our Charter Evaluation Committee. And for the past 24 years, they've been reading and assessing all of the um, applicants to the Charter for Sustainable Tourism in protected areas. I'm just going to take you on a little whirlwind tour, uh, just so that you can see who these people are. So they've gone through, just like the parks, mountains of paperwork. Seas of application, and somehow they still manage to do it with a smile on their faces. They've gone to very many different locations. They've come to our offices in Regensburg. They've been here in Brussels many times. But again, they still managed to get through all of the paperwork in order to scrutinise your applications to make sure that only the best who meet the criteria can be awarded with the Charter for Sustainable Tourism. There they are, outside our offices here in Brussels, where the Europark has its office. And hopefully this will bring us right up to date with our new, eva yes, our new evaluation committee. Uh, we reformed the committee this year with some new uh, and young uh, blood coming in to help the, uh, I think they, they like to call themselves dinosaurs, but I don't think they're uh, dinosaurs. I think they are uh, uh, the, the wise heads of the charter system. But you might have noticed that there's one person who appears in all of those pictures. In fact, there's two people, but there's one female in particular who appears in all of those pictures. And that is Patrizia. Patrizia Rossi has been the chair of the Charter Evaluation Committee since its beginning. So she really has read all of your documents. And this year she announced that she, I think after many years of hard work, deservedly is retiring from our committee. And I was delighted that she was able to be here with us today, thanks to Ryanair, never mind Al Italia. We got her here just in time because we wanted to take Patricia this opportunity to offer, not just on behalf of Europark, but on behalf of the whole charter network, our thanks to your fantastic dedication and work that you've given to this process over these years. I can also just comment on a couple of words from her colleagues in the evaluation committee who've said that uh, she works with charm, with resilience, dependability, and her vast knowledge and experience and expertise, her strict neutrality in the evaluation process, and her sound judgment have all come to bring us all here. And Richard Denman, who will take over as the chair of the evaluation committee, uh, certainly for a couple of years anyway, and he says, he asked me to say this especially, that it's been an enormous pleasure and honour to work with Patricia on the evaluation committee. She's played a vital role in those early stages, ensuring that the charter became the practical tool that it is now today by pioneering her own park, as you can see her here in this picture, the Alpi Maritime, who, to come right up to date, was the very park with Le Mercantour that you saw in the film, The Sustainable Journey, that we've been showing you earlier. She has been not just the tireless champion of the Charter, but certainly what we call the Charter Queen. With Patricia in the chair, the Evaluation Committee meetings have been a joy. Her genuine interest in each and every application has been an inspiration. Her enthusiasm, together with her calm efficiency, have been the perfect combination for the job in hand. And every park and protected area, both here present and those who've uh, been awarded in the past, I think owe her a debt of gratitude because it's been through her leadership in the evaluation committee that have brought us to where we are in the sustainable tourism journey that we've been on. And we are indeed the biggest network of sustainable tourism destinations in the world. 
They will miss Patrizia, as I will too, your sparkle and guidance, your quiet allora. When it was time to sum up and move on to the next application. Patricia has also been an inspiration to me because when I was still a regional park manager in Scotland, finding out that my park was a member of the Europark Federation, I took the first opportunity I could to come to a Europark um, conference, and that was in Norway in 2003, when Patricia was the president of the Europark Federation. And never did I think all these years later, here we would be on the same team. And it has been an absolute delight to, to work with you all these years, Patricia. So we wanted to take this opportunity to make a special award to you. So Patricia, for your outstanding service to the Europark Federation and your dedication to the European Charter for Sustainable Tourism in Protected Area, it's my honour and delight to present you with this very special STAR Award. Thank you. I'm, I'm really moved moved I cannot talk anymore you have seen me in the picture with the black hair so you you know how much time has passed this adventure began in 1993 just after the publication of the famous study loving them to death and we began with this project uh, didn't know where to go but finally we are here so I'm so happy really to see how much has been achieved by the Europark, all the people, and you working on, on the field. Uh, and finally, not only the parks, but also the park partners. Uh, this is the first time that the Star Award is awarded. So it's really a very, very big achievement. I'm, I'm happy, so I can retire <laughs> very happy. Thank you very much. I'm very sorry I got you here under false pretenses, Patrizia, but it was worth it. So we've come to the end of our, uh, well, almost to the end of our award ceremony. And just for a, f uh, oh yeah, we'll, we can do that. Uh, just a couple of quick announcements before um, uh, Mr. Bieber um, says a few concluding remarks. Uh, we do want to get a big group picture of everyone together, and we'll certainly get a picture of uh, Patrizia uh, as well. So please hang back just at the end and we'll, reorganize you in some way uh, to make sure we get you all in the picture. If you haven't um, booked a table at the Falstaff restaurant, where most of us are going to be going um, after our cocktail reception, which you're kindly invited to immediately after the end of the uh, ceremony, uh, please do so. We'd, we'd be delighted to, uh, to have you along with us. I'm not promising to pay your bill, but I certainly would uh, be happy to uh, uh, have some time with you in the restaurant then. So, Mr. Beale, I hand over to you for some concluding remarks. Thank you for having uh, once again the word, and I must say that I'm happy and lucky to have been here this uh, afternoon during uh, well, the Europark Federation's uh, Charter Award Ceremony. It's the second time, and I must confess uh, that uh, I, I had once again been surprised by the energy, the engagement, the work you are doing so far, so that I want to thank you in the name of the Committee of the Regions for all you have done so far, and congratulations for the winners of uh, this afternoon's uh, ceremony. And thank you also, dear Carol, uh, Stefania, Barbara, and especially also uh, Patricia for the work you have done so far, so long a time. I know what it means. I have been twice a um, jury member for the Natura 2000 Award. And that's uh, quite a lot of paper to, to read. And uh, thanks for your job. But thanks also all those people who I just, uh, minutes ago during the coffee break, I saw the communication that started between those who didn't know each other. 
the collaboration that could uh, come out of uh, this. Uh, I think that the collaboration, cooperation is quite an important uh, matter in, in this, uh, the exchange of good practices and uh, I think that it's uh, for the benefit uh, of all and on all levels if we communicate and if we tell about things we are doing uh, according to, to, to the sentence that do good things but speak about it. And I think that uh, you learn from Ignas that uh, I had been rapporteur on the COP14. I will, I, I am uh, designated rapporteur for the COP15 on the Convention on Biological Diversity, and I personally think that you are uh, quite strong allies in helping uh, halting the loss of uh, biodiversity. It's not only a question of tourism and the uh, economic impacts of uh, natural na national parks. I think it's also the second pillar from the Green Deal, not only the climate question, it's also the biodiversity question uh, with which you are dealing with. And so I'm convinced that you might be a very good ally uh, to this. On the other hand, uh, I want to once again underline uh, the numbers uh, of, of your initiatives, your activities, your actions uh, that are quite important in the matter of uh, ecotourism, sustainable tourism, sustainable traveling. Uh, that's uh, quite a, a huge question too, but uh, let me say that yesterday the new European Commission has of officially begun its work. The new Commissioner, Mr. Sinkevicius, I think that's pronounced rightly, yeah? Sinkevicius. He has announced that biodiversity, what I mentioned just uh, a minute ago, will be one of its uh, three main priorities together with the new circular economy action plan and the zero pollution ambition. Moreover, these priorities have been inserted in the framework of the new Green Deal, linking them with other EU policies such as climate, energy, agriculture, transports, cohesion and health. Mr. Sinkevicius is also directly responsible for oceans and fisheries. The priority on biodiversity focuses mainly on two aspects, the strategy for 2030 and, as I said, the 2020 conference in China on biological diversity. So, as rapporteur, I will stress uh, and, and try to have a very ambitious opinion, a very ambitious official statement from the Committee of the Regions, and I hope that will help you as an argument for nat national parks uh, and, and the benefits uh, of national parks. I also invite you, and uh, we both uh, spoke at the beginning of uh, this meeting about uh, the Green Week, uh, the Committee of Regions uh, yearly organizes, and so uh, I invite you once again to take part in this. Uh, we will have uh, at the Green Weeks uh, quite a large audience, uh, quite quite number, quite a number of uh, stakeholders and and uh, other people come along this week, and that's a good opinion, a, a good uh, moment to make further networking and contacts and uh, collaborations, maybe. So also the Natura 2000 Award organized by the European Commission will be an interesting occasion to hear about good examples of protected areas. So I hope that uh, also this uh, afternoon I learned, learned uh, some interesting parks I didn't know, but uh, I think in the perspective of the Committee of the Regions, uh, you are working throughout all the regions in national, national nature and close nature uh, areas uh, throughout all the regions uh, of Europe. So you can be sure that uh, you will have also in the next upcoming month and years the support of the Committee of uh, the Regions. I would stress uh, once more that you have over all the years done a marvelous job. And uh, I just hope that uh, despite the retirement of uh, Patricia, we'll have uh, all the, the, the stuff uh, from Europark Federation will have the energy, the will, the engagement to continue in this way. And uh, I wish you all the best lucks, luck and uh, congratulations to this year's uh, winners and uh, to those engaged 
on the field in this uh, good uh, uh, initiative. Thanks for your engagement. Thank you, Mr. Beaver, for those very kind words. Um, just to conclude from, from our side, from Europark, um, I think what we've discovered today, certainly lots of the fantastic pictures that have been shown from your parks around Europe, is that the landscape of our parks and protected areas isn't just the backdrop to the tourism, uh, to the tourism offers to the destinations, but it's an integral part of that landscape. It's, it's the whole offer, it's the culture, it's the food, it's, the, it's of course the nature. Those are our principal assets. Because it's fundamental, those natural assets for biodiversity, but also of course for climate change, but of course for the livelihood of the peoples that live in and around our parks. And particularly, obviously, as we've heard today, from the businesses who derive a livelihood from that. Because by working together, we can't leave conservation just to the conservationists. That's the importance of the businesses and the tour operators and the other stakeholders that we work with here. Because it's our intent and purpose together to have a healthy living landscape. And it's tourism that stimulates that change. Because as, as I said right at the very beginning, we're all on that sustainable journey together that we need to be making more sustainable choices as organisations, as individuals and as businesses. And you mentioned in your presentation right at the beginning uh, about having a collaborative economy. And I hope you've seen some glimpses of those examples here in this room that we have shown innovation. We have shown that we can still be competitive and be sustainable. And that's something I think our charter is very proud of. And finally, you called in your speech at the beginning for a European year of sustainable tourism. And I can absolutely assure you, and I'm sure on behalf of everyone in this room, we would absolutely and wholeheartedly support that call. And we would be right behind it, if not at the forefront of it. So yeah, bring it on. We would love to have a year of sustainable tourism to show the world what we can really do to make a difference. So with that in mind, um, I send you back to your parks and your protected areas and to your businesses to carry on the fantastic work that you're already doing. Please keep in touch with us. Uh, we thrive on your stories, as Barbara has mentioned earlier, and they're an inspiration to everyone else and hopefully an inspiration to you as you learn uh, and network uh, from each other. So with that, I say thank you again and um, join us for a family photograph of our this year's uh, Europe Park Charter for Sustainable Tourism and Protected Areas Award winners. Thank you very much. So, so for, for the picture, I invite you to go in the middle row, standing, please. And so you try to squeeze everyone in the different... Uh, Sorry, during the preparation for the, for the family picture, I would like to ask you a big applause for Alberto, who worked very hard to organize this event. <laughs>